Today, I'm going to make a start on fixing my backhand. Now, I'm under no illusion that I can fix my backhand within this one training session, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take you onto court and show you a four step process that I'm gonna to use to make a technical correction within my backhand. And if you hang around to the end of the video, I'll show you how you can translate what you're working on within training sessions onto the match court. I'm actually gonna make a very similar video on my serve as I've got a few technical tweaks that need to be made there as well. So if you wanna see that one, consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get into it. So to put things into context, my backhand is my weakness and you guys that have seen my match play videos on this channel will know that I tend to use my slice backhand more than my drive backhand. When I do hit my drive backhand, it's a double hander, but because I'm not competing much these days, um, being a coach, I tend to hold tennis balls in my offhand when I'm feeding and rallying with my players. So I often tend to chip the ball back in or hit a single hander, which naturally is not ideal for me being a double handed player when I'm getting into a competitive situation. So I really want to improve my drive backhand again. Technically, it's pretty solid. I'd say it's quite a basic technique. Um, that's the benefit of having a, a double handed backhand. There's a lot less that can go wrong and a lot less variables on the double handed stroke as opposed to the single hander. But there is one technical fault and you'll see it in these videos here at the back of my back swing my strings open up now this is actually not a problem for me when i'm playing weaker players and the ball's traveling slowly when i'm coaching or when i'm just hitting with the ball machine like you'll see me today where it actually breaks down is when i'm receiving a heavier ball as naturally when i want to make contact with the ball i definitely don't want my strings to be open and so when it's open at the back of the swing i have to do some work to close those strings over the top of the ball resulting in inconsistency and so if I make that small technical tweak at the back of my backswing, closing my strings ever so slightly more, I believe that it's going to help me to stand up to those bigger, heavier hitters with much more consistency. And when I try to inject some speed into my backhand, I'm going to have a lot more success. Now, the good thing about making a video like this is there'll be some of you watching this that have exactly the same problem. And so if that's you, you can follow this exact process. However, if you have a different technical problem, this process will still work. I would just try to follow the basic outline of how I do these drills and break it down for the technique that you want to improve. So before I start hitting, let's talk about why my strings are opening up at the back of my backswing. It's primarily to do with my grip and my wrist position. Now for my double-handed backhand, I use the continental grip for my hitting hand, my right hand, and with my off hand, I'm on an Eastern forehand grip. Now, by simply moving my off hand to more of a semi-western grip, that would actually encourage me to close my strings more on top of the ball. But what that would also do is it would encourage me to swing with a steeper upward trajectory, imparting more spin onto my backhand. And personally, my backhand is already quite a weak shot. And so adding top spin is only gonna make my backhand slower. So I'm keen to keep quite a flat backhand as it suits the way that I play. And for me, the Eastern forehand grip for my left hand feels the most comfortable. So I'm gonna keep that grip. But what I am going to try to change is the way that I draw the racket back. You'll notice here that as I draw my racket back with my unit turn, I keep my left hand wrist position quite neutral. And that's where those strings open up. If I cock my left wrist back ever so slightly, that's going to allow my strings to be more perpendicular to the floor. And it's also going to allow for my right wrist to be more neutral, which is pretty much where both of my wrists need to be when I make contact with the ball out in front of my body. Where my left wrist was in a neutral position back here, you can see that if I keep that wrist position, my strings are gonna be very open at contact. So what I'm having to do is turn my wrists as I strike the ball, resulting in inconsistency when I'm receiving those bigger, heavier shots. I tend to get away with it when I'm playing against slower hitters as my timing's pretty good, but I'm really exposed when I'm playing those bigger hitters. And so I always resort to slicing. So the first step in the four step process is I'm gonna set up the ball machine to feed me the same ball over and over again. I want to limit any variables. So having that consistent feed is going to allow me to really focus on my backswing and making sure that I get that wrist position that I want on every single ball. Now, yes, this isn't realistic to what I'm gonna be receiving in a match, but if you follow the four step process, you'll see that step number four, you'll be able to put this into practice into a point situation. Let's get hitting. So first of all, I've set up the ball machine to feed me the same ball every time, and I'm really gonna limit my movement so that I can focus purely on my backswing. I'm just gonna hit these balls cross court and really prioritize this wrist position as opposed to this wrist position at the back.
So even for me as somebody who's hit thousands and thousands of balls in my life and made tons of technical changes, it still feels odd when I'm making that technical change. And so for me, I'm actually gonna try to overcorrect and feel like my strings are more downward because that will probably help me to find where I want to be. It's many, many years of bad habits. And so anytime you're trying to undo something like that, you might need to think about overcorrection. You'll probably be able to see here in the video, I'll be able to see afterwards, that my strings are probably ever so slightly up at the back, but um, I'm trying hard to keep them more perpendicular to the floor. I definitely feel like it's helping me to get a more stable contact, but it still feels a bit odd at the back of the swing. But if you're making a technical change, it's got to feel odd. If it doesn't, you're probably not making that change. That one felt good. No. Nope. I actually feel like I'm gripping the racket quite tightly because I'm really trying to force that wrist position. So I need to remind myself to stay loose. Right, I think I'm out of balls. But yeah, that's an important point. I find when people are trying to make technical changes, they automatically grip that racket tighter. It really doesn't help. So you've got to remind yourself from time to time to stay loose. Let's get into the second step. Just quickly, while I'm picking up the balls, drop a comment with who you are and where you're from, as I love getting to know you guys. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, as I'm 55% of the way to my big target of getting that silver play button. Back to the video. Okay, so round two, I'm gonna start moving. So let's take this jacket off, move this microphone. So I'm gonna add some movement into this one because it's really, really important that as soon as possible, you move away from that isolated drill of just hitting your stroke from a static position as we know that's not realistic. So now, uh, same exercise, but this time I'm gonna make a recovery back to the middle. My main priority is making sure that when I get out to the backhand, I've set myself with that good wrist position before striking the ball, but importantly, making a recovery before the next shot. I'm still gonna go cross court. I'm still gonna keep the stroke simple, but now it's just a case of adding some movement, making it slightly more challenging. Ah. Ah. Went a bit early there cheating it. That one felt good. All right, two more, and then I'm gonna up the challenge by making it feed a bit quicker. Ah. Okay, so I'm just gonna up the feed speed slightly, so I've got less time in between each shot. Still trying to overcorrect that backswing. I'm trying to get to here, because I know that if I feel like it's here, it's probably gonna be here. And unfortunately, if I feel like it's here, it probably means it's up here. Ooh. Ah. Okay, here we go. It's just warming up. Ah. Late. Ah. 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 Feels good. Ah. Come on. Ah. Okay, I'm gonna pause there because what I felt on those last two and the reason why I skied them, I still feel like I'm gripping too tightly. And because of that, I'm really forcing my backhand. If I can just loosen up my arms and relieve the tension in my forearms, I'm gonna allow that racket head to drop and have its most natural path through the ball here rather than me really, really forcing it. So same thing, I'm gonna keep the movement because I feel I'm able to do it. Um, but yeah, really focusing on racket face position and keeping nice and loose at the back of the swing. It's good for my fitness too. Better. Get to the ball earlier. Nice. Ah. Funny thing now is now I'm looser. I'm actually getting a lot more power with less effort. You should be able to see my racket heads dropping. 
just before I drive through the ball. Uh. Uh, uh. Don't force it. Uh, uh. Felt my strings are opening up a little bit. Uh. Again. Uh, uh. That was better, that was a good one. Right, I'm out of balls. So, I'm going through these drills slightly faster than I would suggest. Spend some good time on each of these steps. But for the purpose of this video, let's get on to step number three. Step number three is adding some variety. As you can see at the other end of the court, I've set up some targets. I've set some for backhand cross and some for backhand line. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to do rounds of four shots. I'm going to hit two cross court backhands, one down the line backhand, and then an inside out forehand to give me more variety. Now, when you're playing with a ball machine, it's very robotic and it gives you the same ball each time. You can put it on oscillate, which gives you a bit more variety, but the best way I find to add variety is by changing your position and changing the type of shot you want to hit. Nothing beats playing with a human being. I'll talk about that in step number four. But for this drill, we're gonna add variety through changing the type of shot that I'm hitting. My aim is to really focus on that wrist position at the back of my swing and staying nice and loose through the shot. Let's go. Okay, two cross, one line, and then inside out. One. Oh, good start. Two. Three. Ah. Uh, uh. Ah, four hands late. Two cross, shot. Better wrist position. Ah. 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 Better. Uh. 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 That's the coaching backhand. But yeah, this is starting to feel good already. Like I said at the start, I'm under no illusions. This is definitely not going to fix my backhand after one session, but it's a good start. As you can tell, I'm pretty unfit, so I'm gonna get the balls up, and then we'll talk about step four. So we've started with no variety with a simple feed over and over again to get repetitions and volume in of working on that slightly adjusted technique. Next, we added movement, so the ball was slightly further away. I had to move to the ball, track it, hit it, recover. Then we added variety to the type of shot that I was hitting. So as you can see, it's starting to become more and more realistic to playing in a point situation. However, there's nothing more realistic than playing with a human being. So now is the time to do some drills with another player at the other end. And your aim is to see if you can hit that same shape during a rally ball. So you can do this cross, you can do two cross one line. There's tons of different ways you can do this. But as soon as possible, you want to get yourself into that realistic situation. Now, when you're hitting with another human being, you're your brain is going to be busy with reading and anticipating that oncoming ball, moving your feet into the right position before you can even think about executing the swing. So this is where it becomes a lot, lot tougher but still stay focused on what you've been working on. As if you let it slip into old habits, it's gonna be very, very tough to ever improve it. Once you start to feel more comfortable with making that technical tweak in a live situation, now you're ready to put it into practice in matches. Now, hopefully, if you've done enough repetitions, you won't need to think about it too much. It will start to become natural. But at the start, you may have to be conscious about it. So doing lots of practice sets is great. The challenge that I set myself for my next practice set is to limit the amount of slices I do. If I could force myself to hit more double-handed backhands, I'm either gonna go into my old habit and make lots of mistakes, or I'm gonna make that new technical adjustment and find myself more stable on the ball. It might go terribly, it might go really well, but I've gotta put myself through that process to make that improvement. But one of my biggest tips is to try to film yourself playing. Now, I've obviously filmed this video for YouTube, so I'm going to look back at the footage and see if I actually made that technical adjustment on my backhand. Because for all I know right now, 
I didn't do it. It felt to me like my strings were more perpendicular to the floor. I was even overcorrecting lots of them. But when I look at the footage, it might be a very, very different story. So it's really important for you to film yourself so that you can look back to see if you've actually made the change or not. And for me, if I haven't, I'm gonna have to get back out there and really over exaggerate it until it starts to feel a little bit more normal. As I said earlier in the video, if you're making a technical adjustment and it feels good straight away, it's probably because you haven't made it at all. It should feel awkward, it should feel strange, as it's different to every other shot you've hit previously. So I hope that inspired you to get out onto court. As I mentioned earlier, I've got some technical problems on my serve as well. So I'll make exactly the same video following a step-by-step -step process on how I'm gonna improve my serve. If you wanna watch that one, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. Thanks as always for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.